I'm Murray Carter, and this is Carter Cutlery High Performance Tips. Today we're at Terry's Gym in Vernonia, Oregon, with expert bodybuilder Terry Fultz. How you doing, Terry? I'm doing wonderful, Murray. Good to see you again. Thanks for doing this interview. Yes, sir. Terry, how old are you? Well, I just turned 65 back in March. 65. Yes, sir. Yeah, and how long have you been bodybuilding for? Well, I started when I was about 14, maybe a little bit younger. I started back in the days before we actually had weights. We we used car axles and sunk them into coffee cans f filled with wet concrete. Then we had to let that set, and then we turned it over and did the same thing to the wow, other. That's, that's old and school. We, so we created our own, our own weights. But uh, we did a lot of gymnastic stuff back in those days, a lot of high bar and that type of thing. And then um, I just fell in love with the, uh, the, the resistance part of that and overcoming my own limits and setting new goals for myself. And that's why you got into bodybuilding. That's pretty much why, yeah. Um, when I got into high school, I played football for a couple of seasons. Um, I enjoyed that, I liked the contact, but I, but I enjoyed more, the, more so the weight room. The coach threw us into the weight room. And I think I fell in love with the weight room a lot more than I did with anything, anything mm -hmm. else. I wrestled, I swam, football, track and field. I still have some records from high school. They're, my, my pole vault record, I think, still stands. Oh. But um, I, I enjoyed the training aspect of all of those sports. Uh, I enjoyed the actual weight room experience more than, than the sport those, itself. Yeah. And did you have any role models back in the day? Well, from my time, my era, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, uh, Lou Ferrigno, you know, he was the, the Hulk. Of all of those guys, I mo my physique more uh, is more re resembling of that of Frank Zane. And uh, Frank Zane, uh, matter of fact, when I was younger, back in my 40s, a lot of people thought I was actually Frank Zane. But I told him, I said, you're about 20 years off. <laughs> so if I do some simple calculations, you're 65, been doing it for since you were 14. You've been bodybuilding for over 50 years. Yes, I have. Yeah. What, what do you figure has been one of the keys to being able to sustain the bodybuilding lifestyle? You know, when others have petered out, they've come and gone, and you're still bodybuilding. What, what do you attribute that to? There's only one word that can possibly describe something that, that has lasted that long, love. I must have fallen in love with this, with this, with the atmosphere, the clanging of the weights, um, the, the the sound of the of the pulleys uh, with the cables going around, um, the the whole gym experience. That's why currently today I own a gym. Mm -hmm. That's why we're sitting in Terry's gym. Um, I I I I've visited all the other gyms from high school on out. Um, I, I remember when when uh, gyms first came to be. Um, I had a dream when I was 19 years old that I would one day own my own gym. And it took me all these years and I uh, was well into my 50s before I ever was able to actually have my own facility. So it was, it's, been a, it's been a long dream, a long time coming. But um, now that things are here, it's, it's really worked out ple very pleasingly well. Now, in over 50 years, you've got a lot of accomplishments. In fact, you shared your trophy room with us earlier. We just, we just took lots of footage of the trophies, and it seems there's almost, Terry, too many to count. Besides all the competitions which you've won and are still winning, what are some of your other accomplishments? I think one of the attributes that I am, am probably the most proud of is what I've done for other people. Um, I, I do the grocery shopping for my home and I get in and out of the supermarket every other day or so and I run into mothers, fathers, brothers, uncles, aunts, grandparents of the people that I have worked with here in the club. These people walk up to me and they say, I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for Donnie or I want to thank you for what you've done for Dorothy or I want to thank you for what you've done for my husband or my wife, mm -hmm. my mother, my father. Or, or um, Colin Moeller, for example. Yeah. Um, the, the, that's the reward that comes back that uh, is so appeasing. Those are the moments that make all this hard work worthwhile. worth it. 
mm -hmm. because it, that that is something that I can say, okay, that person never would have been able to say that had it not been for me. What are some of the lessons you've learned in your long career of bodybuilding? Lessons. That's an excellent question. There's only one word that I think that can describe the only thing that I've ever looked for in my life is loyalty. Loyalty from someone who loves me, loyalty from the people that come to the gym. Um, if they're loyal and loyal to themselves, they're loyal to me, I'm okay with that. But what I won't tolerate is an in inability to be loyal. Mm -hmm. What are some of the regrets you've had over your bodybuilding career? Is there anything that uh, you would have done differently if you could go back in time? Oh man, if we could all climb in that magic time machine and go <laughs> back and change our lives. Um, you know, realistically, there's not a lot I'd change in my life. Um, I think I've, I've done what I've tried to do in my life. Um, I think I, I, I would have tried to have gotten a lot more done sooner. Um, I would have reached conclusions that I have reached at this age in my life um, due to maturity. I wish I had a level of maturity when I was younger that was much higher and would have allowed me to forecast and look into the future and say, all right, Terry, uh, if you can just put yourself three or four years down the road, what would you do different today? But, but you see, those opportunities don't come. That's right. Those slip between our fingers. We lose that. Mm -hmm. So what it, what it has taught me is to really pay attention to what is the here and now. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to those that I can help. The blessings I get from them is when they smile or I see parts of their family smile in recognition of what they have accomplished when they would not have been able to accomplish any of that physically unless I had, I had sent them in the mm -hmm. right direction. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here waiting to share my, ex my experience and my knowledge. Terry, when I first started coming to the gym, I wasn't overly excited about coming up here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The reason being is I just didn't have a passion for putting my body through lots of pain and stress. But I found that by being accountable to a group, I mean, you guys and me included, we work out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at five o'clock and we know the same members are going to be here. And we know they're all good spotters. They're all, you know, a good bunch of guys and we have a good camaraderie. I found that's really helped me find joy in bodybuilding. And now it's become such a habit that I just sorely miss not coming up here on a Monday, Wednesday or Friday. In fact, if I'm on the road doing business or whatever, if I miss a workout, I'll be sure to catch up on that workout at home or at a, a sports gym out of town. That's been my remedy to make bodybuilding fun for me. What are some other you know, remedies to, for people who quit? How, how can we suggest that they might uh, find something that's appealing to them in bodybuilding? Well, I think it's, it's a matter of, of individual choice. Um, you, it's the old saying, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And I can bring people through the door, welcome them into the gym, and have them either accept the atmosphere and fall in love with it, which is what's required, or... To continue with it. It's in order to continue with it, or they will dance around the theory and the philosophy of, of living a, a, an inf, a fitness lifestyle, but they, they, they really haven't grasped and totally given of themselves to make that commitment mm -hmm. to have a complete fitness lifestyle, which is, which is the requirement. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, um, bodybuilding isn't something that happens on a daily basis or a weekly or a monthly or happens once in a while. This is something that happens every day, 24 hours a day. You eat, sleep, dream, bodybuilding, diet, all your nutritional habits. This isn't something that is seasonal like football, basketball, baseball. You don't go through your season. I have a competitive season, but I train all year, year round. Yeah. round. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and recognizing that I do need to take a little bit of time off now and then to be social, to um, 
um, be w w within the guidelines and limits of what would be acceptable as human <laughs> human nature, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm perfectly happy right here in the gym. Well, I think our viewers are starting to catch on, Terry, that bodybuilding and being successful isn't just all about coming to the gym and exercising. It's equally about listening to your body, discerning whether you know something needs further attention and getting rest. This is a complete package. It's not just about moving weight. That's a, that's a great way to put it. It is a complete package. Yeah. One doesn't happen without the other. That's the first thing I always tell anybody that wants to join the gym and the first thing they ask me or I ask them when they mention the term bodybuilding, okay, do you actually know what you're getting yourself into? Do you understand what the term bodybuilding actually means? And the next thing I ask them is, how many bodybuilders do you know? And they'll say, I don't. How many bodybuilders have you ever met? Well, I'm talking to you. Okay, there's something pretty significant about what I just said. If bodybuilding was easy, wouldn't there be more of us? If bodybuilding didn't require a tremendous amount of education and dedication, wouldn't there be more of us? If there was shortcuts to bodybuilding, wouldn't there be more of us? Everybody wants to look like those guys in the magazines. They want to have nice big arms. They, they, want, they want that bodybuilder look, but are they willing to take that responsibility and be held accountable to become a bodybuilder? Do they really know what they're getting themselves into? Are they, are they willing to cancel that social activity? Can they stay out of the tavern? Can they stay away from the, 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 the other element of life that comes with uh, tequila parties and that type of thing? Is that important to you or is your life? You take a look at me, I'm 65 years old. Do I look 65 years old? To some people I look older, but to most people I don't. Most well, people I look like I'm in my 40s. So there are there's benefits to everything. There are also prices to pay. Yeah, sacrifices.